I literally look like I'm wearing a superhero mask. Trust the process. Reminder to trust the process. <laughs> Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I feel like I'm literally always filming get ready with me's or make tutorials when my hair needs to be redone and I don't know what to do with it, so apologies here. If you're new here, hi, my name is Carrie. I make girly glam and slightly ratchet content here online. <laughs> Today's video being no exception. And today I am bringing you a quick get ready with me slash make a tutorial on this blue eyeshadow look. If you are just coming across my channel and you haven't seen any of my other socials, you might be like, girl, why? <laughs> Why such a bold look right now? I literally did this eye look so rushed and so quickly to film different content for one of my new businesses, a clothing rental service called Glamanista. Shameless plug. And the focus of that content that I posted on my Instagram and my TikTok was not the eyeshadow look, it was the clothes. I also did a couple of TikToks with this eyeshadow look all in one day. I was just trying to crank out content, but y'all kept talking about this eyeshadow. I got DMs, I got comments about we need a tutorial, so here is the tutorial. If you want to know how to do this look, just keep on watching, but first make sure that you subscribe to my channel. I have had YouTube the longest out of all of my social platforms, and I'm feeling reinvigorated in June, so I think my goal for the last six months of 2024 is to really focus back in on being more consistent on my channel and fully growing YouTube. So if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button, it means the world to me, and turn on the post notification bell, that way you stay up to date when I post new girly vlogs, tutorials, get ready with me's, hauls, all that jazz. And if you are from the YouTube family but you don't follow me on my other socials, you can follow me at Glamanista08 everywhere. That way you can stay tuned and see all the other girly glam and slightly ratchet parts of my life, especially since I post on there on the daily. But I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna get into this tutorial. All right, here we are. I got the Cabbage Patch fingers today because my nails aren't done, so don't mind me. I'm gonna try my best to give you the exact same steps I did. However, I did not plan it and I was in a rush when I did this look the first time. So let's see where this goes. I started off with prep. So I'm just gonna go on with the same prep I did. That day I decided to use my Milk Primer, which I actually really like this. This is their Hydro Grip Primer. It's really nice for keeping your makeup on for a long period of time. I have been so obsessed with that K-Beauty Balm Stick by Kai that I haven't used this in a while, but I went back for it for that day and now it's on my jam list again. It's just so sticky, but it's not uncomfortable. It's not heavy and it's not pore clogging. Plus, it feels super hydrating, so if you have dry skin, definitely recommend. And I'm also going to throw on a hangover balm. I couldn't find my clear one, but this one is the Coco Kiss. This is my Too Faced. It's literally my absolute favorite lip treatment, period. So once I have this prepped, I actually like having primers stay on your face for a little bit before you go in with face makeup. I feel like my makeup has lasted longer and looked smoother this way. But now we're going into the brow. My brow lamination is overdue, so I definitely need some brow gel again. So I'm going in with the e.l.f. brow lift. This is like $2, but it is so good. Honestly, I kind of like this better than the Anastasia one. And in case you don't like this spiky brow look, um, I then go in with the top of the spoolie and just shape the very tips of my brow hair so that it doesn't look as crazy. I'll go in with concealer underneath in a second and that I feel like just makes laminated brows or brow gel brows, feathered brows, whatever you want to call it, look a lot less scary. While I wait for my brows to dry, I'm now going to go in with the concealer. I love using the REM Beauty Concealer. I use the shade medium 3W, which is super light, um, but it's the perfect shade for underlining and highlighting my brows. I like using this concealer a lot as my eyeshadow primer now too. Smudge out, blend so that there are no super harsh lines. Now before we even get into applying eyeshadows, this is the point in this tutorial in which I have to remind you to just trust the process because you will look insane until the very end. <laughs> and now I'm gonna go in with eyeshadows. If you are new here, I am obsessed with Too Faced Cosmetics. No, they are not sponsoring this video. They're still my favorite makeup brand, especially when it comes to their eyeshadow palettes. They just give you everything every single time. Like I've used this so much, even though it's really colorful. This is an essential palette. Obviously you can use any blue eyeshadows for this that are similar to mine, but if you wanted to use the exact same colors, I am taking the Too Faced Italian Spritz palette, which I think is actually really perfect for the summertime. And then I used a little bit from the Too Faced Too Femme palette. I'm not sure if you can still get this because this one was a limited edition one. So I'm gonna start with the Too Femme palette, but you just need a matte light shade. Again, you're using this as just a base for your eyeshadows to pop and also to set that concealer. I'm actually gonna go in with a slightly lighter tan shade, this one right here, called Toasted in Tuscany from the Italian Spritz Too Faced palette. 
Again, you can use any shade that's similar. I am just using this as a transition shade. And the trick to this look, making your eyes look larger, is always dragging your eyeshadow outward, but not down. Going back to the Too Femme palette, the only other shade I'm using in this palette is this light blue. And we're taking as much of this as possible. This is a matte teal shade, but it is pastel. So it's one of those shades that you do have to kind of go back in with. I am just patting it to focus the color first on my lower lid, mainly. The next step is a little bit weird. We're gonna go back into the Italian Spritz palette and I'm using the two sparkly blues. Both of these are super metallic. I'm going to start off with the Lake and Bake, the dark one. I am literally going to just start to apply this as if it's a crease color as well, right into the area where we apply that first brown shade. We're gonna extend the eyeshadow outward and also a little bit downward on the outer corner of the eye just so you start to get a little bit of a triangular shape going on. And then I am gonna go into the lighter metallic blue like Como and do the exact same thing. I know it might seem weird to layer the light on top of the dark, but it's just so that we can get a little bit of a gradient starting to go on. Now that we have our eyes looking like this, I'm gonna go back to that first Tiffany Blue matte shade and just reapply to blend it into the new blue shade. Almost as if we're doing like a little bit of a cut crease. But then I'm also going to take it and literally do this. Which again, <laughs> I know seems insane, but once you finish this look, this will blend out. Thank you later, okay? Just go with the flow. And then we're gonna blend so that we have a little bit of a gradient in between the dark and the light like this. I know she's looking a little crazy, but that's all right. Now, if you want, you can go in with this greenish shade in the Too Femme palette or like a very light sparkle that's not gonna take away from the appearance of the blue. And I like to apply glitters with my fingers whenever possible just because I feel like you get a little bit more control over how pigmented you want the glitter to come off. I'm just focusing this on the center of the eye for now. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that same glitter and just pop it into the inner corner. I didn't want anything to detract from the eyeshadow originally when I did this, so I'm actually now gonna go in with two pencil eyeliners. One is a dark navy blue and one is more of that like teal. These are both the Too Faced Killer Liners, my favorite eyeliners. So I'm going in with the shade Killer Sapphire and if you blink a lot like me, I literally have to close my eyes on an eyeliner pencil, but you can see it gives you a little bit more definition and fullness without you having to go heavy on the lid. And then I just took the Killer Turquoise shade and did a little bit in my waterline. And then for your lashes, you definitely want a base, so I'm gonna go in with the Too Faced Naturally Better Than Sex Mascara. I'm gonna do the rest of my face before I actually apply my eyelashes apply rhinestones or do lower lashes because all of that stuff can easily get messed up in the process of doing your face makeup. So we're gonna look like this for just a little while, but I'm gonna do the other eye and then I'll come back to show you what I did for the rest of this look. I literally look like I'm wearing a superhero mask. Trust the process. Reminder to trust the process. Our face is already prepped, so now I'm gonna go in with my foundation. I have been using this nonstop, mainly because I got a tan when I went on vacation and Nothing else matches my face anymore. So this is the e.l.f. Halo Glow. You guys already know, it's super popular. Medium tan, shade five. And honestly, I feel like this gives a really good amount of coverage. And I like this because it leaves a really glowy finish. So I just literally stipple this on the face. And I'm not gonna bring this up to the eyes because we're gonna clean up the eyeshadow with concealer just so we have a little bit more coverage without having too much product underneath the eyes because we don't want to crease. I also like this because it's super affordable but feels like you have nothing on. But you can see the glowiness it's added to the face. And once you set this, you still look glowy but you don't look greasy. Next, I'm gonna go in with my trusted concealer combo of the moment. I have been obsessed since the first time using the Lancome concealer. I'm in the shade 330. This I would have never put on my bingo card until they sent it to me. I love Lancome products, do not get me wrong. Lancome is usually marketed for mature women because their products are really hydrating and really great for texture. I never really use them other than on clients, but this slaps. And then I'm just putting on a little bit of my also Holy Grail. Too Faced Multi Sculpting Concealer, their Born This Way Concealer. I'm going a shade lighter than normal. I'm doing Natural Beige. It's a little bright. I wouldn't put this on by itself, but I use this 
and combo to kind of just brighten the under eye. Now I have been having a little bit of a crisis when it comes to my contour because I feel like my contour has been coming out a little patchy. So I'm gonna go in with Dubious Place. This is their cream bronzer in the shade Sun Kiss. And I like this shade because it's not warm or it's not too warm, it's like a neutral. So it gives you more of that contour effect and less of you looking orange. Okay, she's getting a little snatch. Also, just in case you guys are new, I realized the other day from the DMs that I get of people asking about like, how did I learn about makeup? Um, some of you guys might not even have known about like 2016, 2018 era Carrie. I was always interested in beauty. I am self-taught originally, and I like literally read about beauty techniques because I wasn't allowed to wear makeup, so I just read about it, which is so nerdy, but also on brand. I went to cosmetology school throughout high school and then in college I started off working at Sephora and I learned so much there. They trained so well um, and then I got comfortable doing makeup on other people and so I started freelancing makeup and I did wedding makeup artistry and all this kind of stuff. I'm not just some random girly on the internet who's doing her makeup for fun although it is fun for me and there's still always something to learn and I feel like my makeup style is very much oh she was at her peak in 2016, 2018. The cool little waves that these Gen Zers are doing. I, I'm Gen Z and I don't know how to do that. I definitely think I can figure it out, but it might take me a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm gonna let all of this marinate for a little bit. I typically apply blush prior to concealer, but I feel like lately that, that has not been looking the best. So I'm going to wait for my concealer to be blended before applying cream blush. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go in with the Urban Decay Brow Blade. This is a dual-sided waterproof pencil and pen, and I just love the pen for filling in a little bit more on my eyebrow. So she is in my current rotation. But if you want a drugstore alternative, I definitely recommend NYX. And then I'll just take an empty, clean spoolie that doesn't have any product on it and blend out the front of the brow. Okay, let's blend this out. I'm gonna use my Rem Beauty Mist, Mist Thing. It smells so good because it has lavender in it. I love using setting sprays to wet my sponge because I just feel like it makes your makeup stay on longer. As I blend this, I'm gonna start to blend it up towards that crazy blue eyeshadow that we have. We still want a little bit underneath because we want balance when this eye look is done, but you don't want it to look crazy. So we're gonna start to clean it up and you can see just how much brightness and coverage I got from that little bit of concealer. I just realized I didn't do my nose contour, so I will have to go back and do that. Now you can see, we still have the blue underneath, but she is not as scary. I do recommend taking your contour up to your brow. Blending it up towards your brow bone will just make it look more like it's a natural contour. And then I like to do a little button at the bottom of my nose, but obviously your contour is going to depend on your original nose shape. It's okay if it's still a little harsh after this step because I like to pick the sides of my nose and blend and all that jazz. And for blush, I am not going to use the blush that I used then because I'm almost positive I did the Benefit blush combo. I have a little bit of PTSD because although it is a good combo, I feel like I overdid it the last time. So I'm gonna go in with a new blush that I just opened from a PR package. This is by Hard Candy. It is their Blurring Blush Soft Matte Finish. So we're gonna try this together. But honestly, you can use any type of cream blush as your base. Um, this one is hydrating, blurring, and buildable, and it's in the shade Hot Shot. So we're gonna see what this ends up. Ooh. Oh, you apply it like a lip gloss almost? Okay, I'm just gonna apply it right on top of the contour lines and try to blend so that I don't look like Neapolitan ice cream. Too many Neapolitan moments lately that I'm not proud of, which again is why I'm no longer doing my blush before concealer, but doing it after. Um, she's cute and she's not as scary as I thought, so I'm gonna apply a little bit more. Candy might have done something here. We are starting to look a little bit less scary. So now it's time to set the face and I always kind of change up what I end up using for the under eye, but I think in this instance, I went with a drugstore goodie. I need to finally open my new one, but I like to use my products to the very last drop, or in this case, powder bunch. This is the Essence Brighten Up powder. It's a pressed brightening powder. Um, it is a really great, uh, super affordable um, drugstore find. And I like it because it is truly brightening without like changing the color of what you put underneath. I like to set the outer portion of my under eye and work the powder in towards that inner corner so that it doesn't get cakey. But you can see how brightening 
this is. I like to go in with my high-end powder. I'm going in with the Charlotte Tilbury powder. I love this because they do have tints to them, um, but they aren't super strong tints, so it's kind of versatile. This powder not only sets your makeup, it keeps you from looking powdery because it's like this blurring glowy powder but it actually is blurring and glowy. Charlotte Tilbury did her thing and I don't know how the science behind it works but she did that. So I'm gonna set the rest of my face and then I kind of go in with a little bit of the powder. I don't want too much because I don't want to darken my concealer but I use the Charlotte Tilbury to kind of blend that brightness out so you still get a contrast but she's not scary anymore. The rest of my face routine is pretty boring because I use a lot of like go-to essential products. I'm gonna go in with Hoola by Benefit. I've used this for literal years, at least a decade. For blush, um, I tend to go to the Too Faced blush, Cloud Crush and Velvet Crush, classic rose shade. And then for highlighter, I have been going back to the Benefit Cookie Highlighter. She's definitely super bright, but also very pretty. So I'm gonna try not to overdo it, but I do kind of like the little, I do like to shine a little. So I'm gonna go back to the Too Faced mascara. And now that the upper lashes are dried, you can do your lower lashes without worrying about transferring. And then for the eyes, last time I applied some rhinestones to my eyelid. I'm not going to do that this time just for the sake of saving my rhinestones. <laughs> I'm literally not going anywhere. I'm not filming much after this. However, in case you're curious, I use these little pre-stick rhinestones. They're by Thread Beauty and you can get them from Target. You might be able to also get them offline. But you can also literally go to a craft store, get the small Swarovski ones, and then just use eyelash glue. Once the lashes are on, the look already starts to come together. It's honestly kind of game over at this point. To finish off, we're gonna do lips. I have been obsessed with the Rem Beauty pencils lately, so I'm using the shade EQ. This is nice because she's defining, but instead of it being like a basic brown, it does have a little bit of a pink tint to it. And honestly, you can stop here. I'm gonna neutralize my lips by using these Too Faced Lip Injection Glosses. I'm gonna start with this shade, Soulmate. It's a nude gloss, no sparkle. And I'm gonna go on top of it with this clear but sparkly shade called Stars Are Aligned. Something about lip gloss just oh, so good. And then to finish everything off, I've been combining two different setting sprays. I have been using this non-stop since receiving. This is the one size setting mist, but it is a mattifying setting spray. This keeps your makeup on all day, so I like using it to seal, but I don't want to look matte, so then I go in with the NYX Dewy Finish. And with that, you have the finished, almost finished, minus the rhinestones, blue eyeshadow lip. Alrighty guys! I liked doing this because I haven't done this in so long and I feel like I've been trying to curate like these cute little curly vlogs, um, but sometimes they just need a little sit down moment. Let me know if you want more get ready with me's or makeup tutorials, if you want me to do them like this or you want me to get ready but just talk about something random, let me know. And with all that being said, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye loves!